Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk about what is a normal free T4. So you probably have this lab test in front of you. Um, it may be within the normal reference range that um, has been provided to you, but maybe you're not feeling normal and that's why you're trying to figure out what is going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer that question, what is a normal free T4? We're going to talk a little bit about what your T4 actually means for your body. I'm going to give you a couple quick examples, and then we're going to talk about different things that could change what a normal resort result actually is. If you're looking for just a quick, easy answer, there's not a real, uh, there really isn't one, but as a general framework, you could probably say that in the top 50th percentile of the reference range of whatever lab, um, the reference range that, the, that your lab has provided you, as long as you're in that top half, it's probably okay, but there are some nuances that we're going to talk about in a little bit here. So let's jump in. What does your T4 mean? So the amount of free T4, um, it, what it is, is it's a reflection of the T4 thyroid hormone that is not bound to proteins and is available to be used by your body. Okay, so that's what the term free means, um, the modifier free in front of the T4 means. This, this should be differentiated from uh, total T3 and, and free T3 and, and other modifiers of the terms, but if you ever see anything, any hormone that says free something or free T4, free testosterone, etc., that means that that is the amount of hormone that is free and available to be used by your body. So in most cases, whenever we talk about hormones, we're really only interested in the free amount of that hormone because that's really what your body can use. Now, it still is helpful to understand the total amount of thyroid hormone, both the free um, and the bound, but in most cases, the free is, is most important. Now, why do they have to be free? A lot of that has to do with the, how your body transports hormones in your blood because your blood is mostly water and hormones tend to be fat. And so they have to be bound to proteins, which can carry them through the blood. So it can get from what, from your brain, you know, to, to your heart and so on and so forth around your body. But the free T4 is an important thyroid hormone, but it's not the most important thyroid hormone because free T4 is not the active thyroid hormone. Yes, it is free and yes, it is available to be used, but your body must act upon it and change it so that it can actually be used by the body. And the way it does that is by converting T4 to T3. Okay, so just T4 by itself, even if it's high, doesn't mean that your body's getting enough thyroid hormone. It must be activated through the conversion process. And in order to be activated, it must be converted. And the, the really cool thing is you can actually look at and assess both your free T4 and free T3. So you can look at it and say, oh, well, I have a, a bunch of T4, but I don't have a bunch of T3. So is it actually being converted and so on? So that's why it's useful. Um, let's look at a couple examples here. So these are pretty standard examples. Um, these are patients that I've looked at and that I've ordered labs for and that I've treated. And so I'm going to give you two examples here. The first one is here's T4 comma free. That's how you might see it on your labs. Um, and then there's two values here. You're going to see your value, which is in this case the 0 0.7, which is flagged as low, and then the reference range provided by your lab. So in this case, it's 0 0.8 to 1.8. Um, nanograms per deciliter. So obviously this is low and then you can see the accompanying TSH which is 12 which is obviously very high. So this patient is pretty classically hypothyroid. So you don't really need, th this is a case where it's obvious that the free T4 is low and that the TSH is high and that the person has a thyroid problem. But they're not always that obvious, okay? And so I, I use this example below. So what if this person was 0 0.8? They would technically be normal, but are they really normal? The answer to that is obviously no, and that's because the range is so broad. So if we go down to the second example here, we see the free T4 value at 0 0.7, but the, this range is 0 0.7 um, to 1.9. And so what you'll find is that the range that your lab provides you is going to be slightly different. It may be the same, but it may be a little bit different, and that's okay, because the way that labs produce that range has to do with all of the people that they check within a given area. So if the people in certain areas have a different... Um, different averages, they give you that average locally compared to you. Okay, so that's why the ranges are a little bit different. So what is actually um, normal? Well, normal is anything that falls between these two large numbers, but that's not healthy. And so what I want to talk about is what is a healthy free T4. And there's three sort of scenarios that I want to talk about here. So first of all, if you are not taking thyroid medication and you're wondering, is my free T4 uh, optimal? Is it healthy? Then the answer is it needs to be in the top 50th percentile of that reference range. So if you look at this one, 0.8 to 1.8, you want it to at least be higher than 1.3. If you look at this range, 0 0.7 to 1.9, you want your result to be higher than 1.3. So if you're not taking thyroid medication, you want it in that top 50th percent. 
percentile. I have um, another video which talks about how to actually calculate that. So if you're interested in the actual calculation, which isn't very hard, um, I walk you through that, but I'm not gonna do that right now. But what happens if you're taking thyroid medication? Well, if you're taking thyroid medication, it depends on which thyroid medication you're taking. So most people are taking a T4 only medication such as Synthroid or Levothyroxine. And what I just said was that is a, it's a T4 containing medication. So obviously if you're taking that, your free T4 should be very high after you take it, right? That would make sense because you're, we're giving you a ton of T4 and we're hoping that your body converts it to T3. So if I'm giving it to you, then we're going, then a normal range is going to be pushed up just a little bit. So you can't use that top 50th percentile if you're taking T4 only medication because it's going to be artificially inflated. Okay. So in that case, if you're taking Synthroid or Levothyroxine, you want that in the top 30th percentile of that range. So the healthy range gets a little bit tighter as you're taking T4. So just imagine it getting shoved up just a little bit higher. Okay. So instead of being 1.3, you want it to be about 1.5 or 1.6. So 1.5 to 1.9 would now become your new range, not the 0.7 to 1.9. Okay, see how we're tightening up the range depending on what happens to you. Okay, and so the option number three is what happens if you're taking a T3 medication such as natural desiccated thyroid or a T3 only medication such as lyothyronine or um, Cytomel. Well, what's interesting is that as you take medications that have T3, it can actually drive down your T4. All right, and so that may be confusing to you guys, but don't let it be. Essentially, what is happening is your body is bypassing the need to take T4 and to turn it into T3 by by you just being given the T3, okay? And so what that does is it drives down the T4 and it drives up the T3. And so what happens is the ranges that I just talked to you about are less important because a top 50th percentile, you may be healthy, but be, in, be less than the top, that 50th percentile. So basically, if you're taking T3 medication, these ranges kind of go out the window, and instead you want to focus on your free T3 and your total T3. So in, the, in this case, what you want to realize is that your free T3 and total T3 as measurements are more important than your free T4. So hopefully that makes sense. There's three scenarios which, which kind of alter what is actually a healthy level. But if you're not sure at all, you can use that sort of top 50th percentile um, as a general basis or a general framework. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions about your labs, interpreting them, or anything like that, please leave them in the comments below. I know this can be really confusing, but hopefully this was helpful and this will help kind of shed some light on that. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.